Next we'll look at the find command. As you'll see throughout this lecture, the find command provides many more options than locate. Not only does it not have the limitation of reading an index file or a database, it also provides a rich array of optional commands that we can use. The key difference between locate and find is that find searches the file system in real time. So if you delete a file or create a file, you don't have to worry about running the database, the update database, to reflect that. The man pages provide a lot of good information about the find command. So we'll type man find. And one of the great things about this particular man page is that it has examples that you can use. So I'll scroll to the bottom with a shift G. And if I move up, we can see lots of different options or examples of the find command. A man page with examples saves, <laughs> saves so much time and effort. This is one of the better documented man pages and I really recommend that if you want to become proficient at using the find command that you look through this and use some of the examples that are available. You can literally cut and paste them into the command line and modify them as you see fit. back down here. The find command is really broken into three or four sections depending on who you talk to. First section is the find command itself. The second section is where you're going to search from. In this case, this particular example is using dot, which means of course that it's searching from whatever current directory you're in. After that, we have which files we're going to find and that may have certain parameters with it. And then finally we execute something at the end which in this case is printing which all that means is just show it to the screen. By default print is implied so you don't have to actually put that at the end of the command. So if you can think of the find command broken into those three or four sections it will make it much easier for you to remember how to use the find command. Now let's go look at a couple of examples of using the find command on our file system. I'm going to switch to root because I want to be able to search everywhere in the file system. Remember if you're a normal user there are many directories that are not available for you to search. So switching to root will just make the output a little bit cleaner. First I'll show you some basic commands and then we'll move on to more complex examples. To demonstrate the use of the find command, I'll be using the same files that we created in the previous lecture. It's a good thing to remember that the, the command is broken into sections. The first part is the command itself. So I'll type find. And then I indicate from where in the directory system. I'll type slash because as root user, I may not know exactly where these files are that I'm going to be looking for. Next, I'll put the parameter that I am looking for a name of a particular file, and then I'll type song and press enter. As you see, I don't get any results because literally there is not a file with just the name song and nothing else. What I probably want to do is use wildcards so I can find files that contain the word song. So I'll up barrel using command line history. I will double quote it to protect it and then I'll narrow down my search. I'm looking for any f any file that contains the word song anywhere in the middle. It can have anything in the beginning and anything at the end. I'll press enter and sure enough we get a couple of hits back. Maybe I would like to narrow the search down and just find songs that were owned by a particular user. The find command can allow us to search for names of songs owned by certain users or groups, certain permissions on those files, and many other and many other parameters. So I'll use history to up arrow. And now I'll say not only do I want to find songs with this or files with this name contained in it, 
but I also just want to find files that, is, that are owned by the user student. And as you can see, that narrowed our search down even further. Well, now that I found these files by this particular user, I can do something with them. The find command allows me to execute other commands after the find command has completed search. An example of that would be maybe I want to see the permissions on these particular files. Well, I can add that parameter to the end of the command. I'll up arrow. And I can type the execute expression. And then I can put ls-l. And after that, I do have to put a place to hold the information that I'm searching for. So let's just read this as if it was a sentence. So run the find command from the root of the file system. Find all files with the word song somewhere in the middle of the, of the name. Those files should also be owned by the particular user student. After you find those, execute ls-l. This part right here, and the reason I use the curly brackets, is because this information up to this point will be run, placed inside the curly brackets, and then executed against this command. So this is a required parameter along with the execute command. Anything that's found here, any information obtained from this part of the find command will be placed between the curly brackets and then the execute ls-l and we know what ls-l is going to do will be applied against that information. So I'll press enter and sure enough here is the output without the executing option and here is the output after using the executing option. So now we can see the permissions when the files were created and we may have some other options that we want to perform on them. Well we've discovered that the uh, student user has mp3 songs in his home directory and we've also discovered that those songs were probably downloaded illegally through some torrent site. So our company, company policy is no illegal songs on the file system. So we'll use the find command to delete those songs. And I'll just change a parameter here. And I type rm-f. Remember, we know these commands already. rmf is just going to force it out. Remember, everything that shows up in here will be placed between the curly brackets and deleted. But before we do that, we realize that these songs are songs we actually like, and we don't have copies of them. So before we delete them, maybe we should do this. We'll copy uh, some of them to the roots home directory. I'll do an ls-l, verify app. The songs are there now. They're in my home directory. Wonderful. I'll up arrow again. And we'll complete the deletion of the user's illegal songs. And if we look in student's home directory, in the music folder, they've been deleted. So not only does this show you the power of the find command, it also shows you the power of being the top dog on the network. All joking aside, there are many other things you can do with the find command. This is a few examples. I really recommend that you go through the man pages of the find, and I have some other information that's available to you.